Hello, Divi Nation, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to swap your Divi header for another one on scroll. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So uh, the first thing we need to do here is to click here on Divi and then go to the theme builder. This is where we're going to build our header. The next step is to come over here to add global header. We need to click on that and then uh, click on build global header. Right, so the next step is to come over here to start building. And then you're just gonna add a single row for now. Next, we're gonna come over here to our section settings. So I'm gonna click on this gear icon and I'm just gonna snap this over to the left. Okay, so with that set, next we need to come over here to design and then click on sizing. So here we need to set the width to 100% and then we need to come over here to spacing and set our top and bottom padding to zero pixels. That's because we don't want any spaces there at the top and the bottom. Next, we are going to add a shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow. And the shadow I'm going to go with is this one right here. So now you can see where our main header is going to be. All right. So with that selected, uh, the next step now is to just a few more tweaks. And we're going to start here with the vertical position. So uh, for the vertical position, we are going to uh, set this to about 15 pixels. And then we're going to come over here to show color, click here on the eyedropper tool and then replace this shadow color with this value. Now I'm going to add all the values and colors in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right. So now that we have that all set, the next step now is to come over here to advanced and then we need to go to position. So here on position, the one that we need is fixed. So we're going to come over here to relative and because this one is the one that's set by default. So we need to come over here to fixed. So now we need to click here on the, this location here right in the middle uh, and making sure that we've uh, set our position to fixed, by the way. So with that now, it's time now to add our rows. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save now. Now I know we already have a row here, but this is not the column structure that we need. The column structure that we need here is going to change. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon and we are going to go with this column structure right here. All right, so now with that selected, I need to uh, go in now and uh, add my colors. So the first thing I need to do is to go to my row settings. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon, go to background and let's add our color. And the color here is going to be black. Okay. So I've set that black. Next, I need to um, make some adjustments over here on the design tab. So the first thing I need to do is to uh, come over here to sizing, select use custom gutter width. Okay. So here we're going to set this to one and then um, we're also going to set our width. And both our width here needs to be set to 100% because we want this to be all the way edge to edge. All right, so there we go. So now we can see it's stretching all the way to the end. Next, we are going to also remove the top and bottom padding. So I'm going to come over here, click on spacing, and I'm just going to add my value here, which is going to be zero, both to the top and the bottom. So now that we've added our padding, the next step now is to come over here to advanced and we're going to add some CSS codes here. So I'm going to go to custom CSS and in the main element, we want to make sure we add this CSS code. Now I'm also going to link this in the post in the video description below. All right. So now that I've added that, the next step now is to just save this and we're going to start adding our elements. So as you can see here, this is quite thin. I can't really go in and add all my elements. So what I'm going to do is to come to the bottom here and click on this little icon here for the layers view and then click here on this plus button. So what I need to add here is an image. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Click on this plus button and I'm going to go to my media library. So what I need here is a logo that's going to go in that place. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here, Crosswire. But of course, you can choose any logo that you want. And then over here, you can see the size is about 226 by 1000 pixels. So I'm going to click upload an image. And now my image has been added. So I can just switch over now to my design view. All right. So with that said, I need to uh, come over here to design alignment and just make sure this is centered and then save. Next, I'm going to come over here and add my menu. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and just search for my menu. There we go. I'm going to select it. Now, at the moment, my menu doesn't have a lot of things and I haven't really gone in and customized it. But in your case, you want to make sure that you choose your menu from here. 
Next, as you can see, this menu comes with this background color. We don't want that. So I'm going to click here on background and just change this to transparency. Next, I'm going to come over here to design layout. And uh, right now, the style is set to left aligned. We want this centered. So I'm going to choose centered. And then I need to come over here to my menu font. And I'm going to click on this drop down here and search for Roboto. So this is the font that we need. I'm going to, in fact, uh, I need the normal Roboto. So I just need to go back here, click on the menu font. And the one I need is just the Roboto. So I'm going to search again and select it. All right. So with that selected, next, we're going to make this bold. And as you can see, we can't really see anything here. And that is because our color here is dark. So we need to change this to white. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And over here on the size, we're going to set this to 18 pixels. So now it's much easier to read. Now, uh, the next step now is to come over here to our drop down menu. And here we need to uh, do a few adjustments. So we're going to start here with the drop down line color. So we're going to set this to black. And we also need to set our icon colors. So I'm going to come over here to icons. And we're going to set our icon colors here. And the one that we specifically need is the hamburger icon. So I'm going to set this to white because we have a dark background. Next, we're going to head over here to spacing. Now here on spacing, I need to adjust my margins. So I'm going to start here by adding 30 pixels. And this is going to be both to the left and the right. So make sure you add and activate that chain. All right. So now that we've added this, the next step now is to add our social media follow icons to the third column. So I'm going to save this. And then click here on this plus button and search for follow. And here we go. So I'm going to select that. So this is where you can add as many uh, social networks that you want. So I'm just going to choose one more here and it's going to be YouTube. Okay. So now that I have these three, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, I'm going to go into each one of these and change the background color to white. So I'm going to start here with the Facebook background, change this to white. So we're going to go back, go into Twitter, change this to white. And finally, we're going to do the YouTube, change this to white as well. Now we want this whole thing centered. So we're going to come over here, alignment and center it. Now, as you can see, we can't really see these icons because it's white on a white background. So this is where we need to change our icon color. And we're going to come over here to icon. And I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and then paste my icon color. So now you can see the color is coming through now. Next, we are going to uh, add a border around this because right now the style that we have uh, is uh, pretty much standard. We want something different here. So let's go with 100 pixels and this is going to make a circular icon. So that's the design we're going to go with. And pretty much I'm happy with that. I'm going to save this. Next, we're going to add another row. So I'm going to hover over here, click on this plus button and choose my column structure. Now, as you can see, it's all edge to edge. So all I have to do is to just pretty much go in and make sure I have all my settings set. So I'm going to click here on row settings, design, sizing, and just make sure that use custom gutter width is activated. And I also need to set my gutter width here to one and equalize column heights needs to be activated as well. And we also need to set our minimum and maximum width. So here on the uh, width, we're going to set this to 100. And max width is, going to, is also going to be 100. So pretty much we're mirroring what we have there on the top row. Next, we're going to come over here to spacing. And here on spacing, we're going to add a top padding of zero, similar to what we did earlier on. Okay, so now that we have all the settings that we need, we're also going to add the CSS code, which allows all our items to be centered and all in the same line. So I'm going to click here on advanced. I'm going to come over here to custom CSS and add my custom CSS here. Now, as I mentioned before, I am going to um, leave this code in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right. So now that I have this all set, we're going to go back over here to content. And in column three, we're going to add a background color. So I'm going to come over here, click on this plus button and paste my color in here. So now you can see we have a solid color there just for column three. All right, so now that we have this, it's time now to add all our elements. So I'm gonna save this and save this one more time. So again, I'm gonna come over here to uh, wireframe view, click on this plus button here, or in fact, uh, we're going to add a logo, which is pretty much the same as the logo that we have uh, in the top row. So I'm gonna click here to duplicate it 
and then just drag it into position. So I'm going to drag it here to the bottom. So now I can switch over to the front view. All right. So now that we have those two logos, you can see we are now building our second header. So I'm just going to go into the image settings here and make sure the alignment is centered and then save. The next step now is to just to clone this and drag one of them into position here on the bottom. So I'm going to drag it like that. And you can see now it has been added. But because it, the color here is white on a white background, we can't really see the um, menu. So I'm going to click here on module settings, design, menu text, and I am going to set my color here. So what we need here is the menu text color. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. So now you can see my color is now visible. We are also going to add our menu drop down. So I'm going to come over here to drop down. And what I need here is the line, the menu line drop down color. So I'm going to click here and paste my color like that. Next, we're going to uh, set our color for the hamburger menu. So I'm going to come over here to icons and hamburger menu icon color. I'm going to click here and replace this with my main color. Right. So now that I've added all this, I'm pretty much happy with this. I'm going to save this. And over here now in the third column, we're going to add a button. So I'm going to uh, search for the button here. And here it is. I'm going to select it. And uh, here you can add whatever text you want. So here we're going to just call this get quote or get a quote. Next, we're going to come over here to design alignment and just make sure this is centered. And now it's time to style this button. So I'm going to come over here and activate use custom styles for button. All right, so with that selected now, the next step is to just go in and uh, make our adjustments. So I'm going to start with my button text color and we're going to set this to white and the size is okay at 20 pixels. Next, we're going to go to the border width and uh, the border width here is okay at zero. Okay, we don't need, we don't need any border width there. All right, so now that I have that all set, we want to make sure we have consistency here. So we're going to go to our button font and set this to Roboto, okay? And the weight as well needs to be bold. So I'm just going to come over here and make sure I choose bold so that our button there is nice and visible. All right, so now that I have all that set, the next step now is to just add top and bottom uh, padding to, uh, to that space to just cover this white space that we have on the top and the bottom. So to do that, we're going to come all the way down here to spacing and we're just going to add a top padding of 33 and we're going to add the same to the bottom. So now you can see we have this beautiful space that looks like just one main button. All right. So now that we have this all set, we're just going to add uh, CSS classes. So as I mentioned before, the CSS um, code that we're going to be using throughout this is going to be in the video description below. All right, so I'm going to save this. And uh, this time we need to go to our section settings. We're going to click on advanced. So you want to come over here to CSS ID and classes. And on class, you just want to add this header section and then save. Next, you want to go to our row settings here. Click advanced, ID and classes. And this time we're going to add header one. We're going to save this. And in the second row, going to click on the settings, advanced, CSS ID and classes. And this one here is going to be header two. All right. So now that we've added this, I'm going to save. And uh, now it's time to add our code module, which is going to have our jQuery. So I'm going to click here on this plus button here and search for code. I'm going to select it. And now it's time to add our jQuery. And as I mentioned before, this jQuery code is going to be linked in the video description below. And that's going to take you to the post that has all this code. All right. So now we, we need to add the tags. So we just need to make sure we add our opening and closing tags. Okay. So that's our opening tag. And I just need to add the rest of the tag at the bottom here. Like that. Next, we're going to also add even more code to this. So we're going to open our style tags. So I'm going to start typing here. So my first opening code here is going to be a style. I'm going to add, enter a few times and then paste my code between these two tags. So pretty much that's what we need to do here. I am going to save this. I'm going to save one more time and then we're going to close out of this. 
save changes to our header that we've just created. And then now we can go in and uh, take a look at our pages. So I'm going to come over here, go to all pages. Now I know I have the home page here, so I'm just going to click on view and we're going to view this in a new tab and see what this design looks like. All right, so this is our header. So as I scroll this, you can see now that it is working okay. There we go. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.